introduction. Really looking forward. The f uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's Fabienne Bocu, Bocu. Bocu. Um, with the talk Grokker, a Docker build chain for Python applications. So, thank you. Uh, I'm here to talk about Grokker, is our uh, build chain for uh, build uh, Docker image from uh, Python package. Uh, but first, let's get some context. I work at Polyconseil. Polyconseil is a company behind uh, Autolib uh, information system. Uh, and Autolib is an electric car sharing services based in Paris. In fact, we have uh, five electric car sharing services in the world, but Autolib is the first and the largest one. So if you have heard of us, it's probably you uh, buy Autolib. Uh, to, uh, the Autolib information system is composed of 30 applications. And when I say application, I do not include uh, Backend like database, uh, Redis server, and stuff like that. Uh, those applications are mostly based on uh, Django application, a bunch of open source libraries, and you run libraries to own business logic. And our problem was to deploy those applications in uh, production. Uh, I, I work on uh, DevOps uh, subjects from time to time. And that's why I'm here to introduce Grokka. Uh, why we build Grokka? In, before using Docker to deploy your application in production, we use uh, Debian packaging. And Debian packaging was held in 2015 for Python application. Uh, you have to edit your uh, Debian package metadata by hand uh, to uh, uh, excuse me, uh, by hand to report the versions that are already declared in your Python package. In your worst case, we took 48 hours to package your application and all its dependencies. And we, we aim to deploy your application once a week. If it took 48 uh, hours, uh, Sorry, if it takes two days to uh, package your application, we have only three days left for validate your application, do the bug fix, and then uh, revalidate the application with the bug fix. And your validation process is very long. It took about a day. It's because we have physical device like car, uh, charge points, and rental cars and the device have to be uh, uh, manipulated by humans. So we move to Docker. Docker allows us to have atomic updates. Uh, once you want to update a system, uh, an application uh, with Docker, you have just to pull an image and run it. You can have a half install uh, application. Uh, the image is based on another machine, so you, if the build process fails, your production is fine. Uh, uh, Gorker allows us to put multiple applications on the same uh, server. Before, we have only one application by server, and most of the time, the server do nothing. Uh, yes, there are other tools that uh, do the same thing as Grokker, but uh, in a different way. For example, OpenShift source to images uh, do approximately the same thing, but it starts from source and no uh, Python package. In fact, when we start uh, writing Docker, we do not know that uh, source to image exists. Uh, Gogger comes from uh, many uh, uh, approach we try. The first one was to use pip install on the production server. But uh, in fact, we had no use it approach uh, because it's too dangerous. 
uh, with this approach, you have to build your C extension in place on the production server, and C may fail. The next approach was to improve your, your Debian packaging tools, and like I said before, it was uh, L. So we gave up and we switched to a Docker approach. The two approach have uh, also another issue. You have uh, your application library linked with your infrastructure program libraries. So if you want to update one of your libraries, you have to be sure that your application and the uh, infrastructure program works with a new version. And uh, it's very difficult. You have to do two changes in the same time. And it's not a good thing. Uh, the next approach we try was to use Dockerfile. But with Dockerfile, you have to uh, build, uh, install your build dependencies, install your application, and remove your build dependencies in one uh, layer, on one layer. Otherwise, you, otherwise uh, the image size will be very big, more bigger than accepted, because Docker do not uh, delete file uh, from. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it does not delete files, it just marks them as deleted. It's just a mask. And the last approach we, we try was the slug approach. In fact, it's a Heroku-like approach. Uh, in the, Heroku is a very popular pass, platform as a service, uh, for those who not know it. In the third approach, we, the build phase and the run phase as a split. In the build phase, we start with a base image, which includes uh, your runtime dependencies and your build time dependencies. You instantiate one instance of this uh, image, and you build your application on it. You save the result of the build process, and you delete the instance, and then, once you run your application, you will rest start a new instance of the image, put the, um, the result of the build process on it, and your application will run in a new, uh, it's a new instance. Uh, yes. uh, the approach has a problem. You have one big base image for all your application, so you cannot have um, an application with special requirements. Uh, or you, so you have a very big and fat image. In fact, Gokar uh, makes the two last approach. We will use a separate build and run phases. Uh, so how it works? Uh, once you build an image with Gokar, We'll start by pulling a ima uh, base image on uh, the Docker Hub, which is uh, for now Debian JC. And on this image, we will uh, add your runtime dependencies to create the root image. This image will be, uh, we will use this image as base for the compiler image, which is the base image we is uh, extended by. Um, build time uh, dependencies and a compiler script. This image will be run to compile the wheel for your application and the, the is dependencies. They will be stored in a data volume and then we will use a uh, web server to expose them. When the web, service, the web server is running, we will create the runner image, which is the final uh, product of your Docker build chain, uh, from the root image, and we will install the will we have be pre-compiled by the compiler image. In fact, it's much complex than this, because we have uh, one root image by uh, dependency, uh, uh, runtime dependency set, but it does not matter is the uh, best principle of uh, how Docker works. 
the compiler image is here to uh, allow to compile will and especially C extensions and link them to the library will, that will be uh, installed in your routine, uh, in your runner image. And it avoids the uh, Docker layer problem. Docker works fine. We use it uh, every day to deploy our application in production. But it have curr currently have some limitation. The one of them is that the base image, is, the root image, sorry, is a 200 megabyte for your test application. It's a very, your test application use uh, ZBar and is a library you, which allows to decode the QR code um, and other stuff like that. And for your more cumbersome application, you have a base image of 600 megabyte. It's a very big, base image, uh, uh, root image. Uh, maybe it's because we use uh, Debian JC, which base image is uh, 125 megabytes, uh, compared to a lightweight um, uh, distribution like Alpine Linux, which uh, image is only five megabytes. But uh, Alpine Linux do not have ZBar, and we use ZBar in your production application. Another problem with the current implementation is that it can only build packaged applications. And in fact, your application have to be packaged and on a PyPy server. It can be a pri private PyPy server, but it has to be on a PyPy server. For the first limitation, we're currently working on it. We hope to have uh, Alpine base uh, in the near future. Uh, yes, uh, so how to use it? It's very simple. You just have to install a broker, pip install broker, and then we, uh, write on uh, your command line broker build your application name, two equal sign, and your application version. And after uh, no so long time, you will have a Docker image of your application. Use that you can run with Docker run. In fact, it's a little more complex than that. Your application has to be packaged, and it must use uh, Python 3, or at least be compatible with Python 3, and do not have runtime dependencies. So IPython is a good example. Otherwise, we have a config file that allow you to set build dependency, uh, runtime dependencies and build dependencies, to um, other stuff like that, or you can use config flag. Uh, if you read carefully the example, I use one of them. I set the entry point to high Python. So like you can see, uh, is the high Python that is running once you start the Docker image. By default, Docker use an entry point named Docker runner, but high Python don't have it. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so, uh, Gogor was open sourced uh, yesterday. Uh, so you can see uh, the source on uh, Polyconsec Docker uh, GitHub account. The package is on PyPy and the doc can read the docs. If you want to contribute, you are welcome. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, do you have questions? Any questions? Okay. Why is the size of your image such a big issue? Uh, can you repeat? Why is the size of your image uh, such a big issue? I mean, we have also Docker images, but they are way bigger than 600 megabytes. Because we want to use a pass. Uh, so if we, we do not know where the image will be uh, pulled. In your, if you, a node of your pace uh, die, for some reason, you have to pull uh, your image. If it is uh, uh, 
uh, one gigabyte is a very long process. If you have smaller image, the response will be faster. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, you say was uh, PIP was dangerous, and can you give us uh, more details, please? Uh. In other approach. Oh yes, uh, PIP. Uh, when you will see extension, you do not know if you have the good uh, build time uh, dependencies installed. If you don't uh, be very meticulous of what you install on the server, you can miss a header or something like that. And if you do it on your production server, the, if the build process fails, your application is not available anymore. So it's not a good thing. More questions? Uh, the config file you talked about, what kind of format uh, does it support? The uh, configuration file you, uh, you can supply. Oh, yes. Uh, a what a kind of format uh, does it support? It's a YAML file. Uh, maybe I have a, an example somewhere. Is uh, very small, but uh, I don't know how to uh, increase the size. Uh, the part we the config file for your application is uh, here. So you can uh, I can read it. Yes. You can uh, set your library, your uh, volumes. Your entry point, your uh, your ports, I think. Um, oh, if you go on the, yeah. oops, on the documentation, uh, we explain that. Uh, okay. On the. Uh, on this page, but so you can say uh, you can put uh, dependencies just that are just runtime for dependencies. You can say that it's just a runtime dependencies because, uh, for example, we use uh, Gedal, libgedal for uh, I don't know, uh, but he do not have uh, binding C extension. He just use uh, C type or something like that. Uh, you can. S have a dependency with runtime, one runtime dependencies, or a list of runtime dependencies, uh, build time dependencies. So. More questions? We have time enough. No? Okay, then. Thanks again.